guys, welcome to Moving On TV and welcome to the community show. We're back and we're back with extraordinary people that have got wonderful stories and today I've got one of them, a unique man, Pete Lang. Hi Pete, so we have you pleasure today. Pleasure, pleasure, pleasure. Thank you, thank you for being here. Now first of all, um, you come from America? Yes, I, I was born and raised in the United States and uh, New York, born and raised in New York City and uh, when I went away to university, I went to the southern part of the United States and now I consider North Carolina my home. Mm -hmm. and and, okay, so as you can see, I've got the New York hat on, <laughs> which is apt for Pete. Um, <laughs> so go on, so tell me a little bit, how long have you been in the UK? I've been here for four years and uh, I work for the largest tobacco company in the world. Okay. All right, which uh, is a place called Alliance One, and, and they are a um, uh, wholesaler. So they buy it from the farmers, and then they sell it to the people who make cigarettes and whatnot. Okay. All right. <laughs> and so my job is to keep all the computer systems that run all the factories that deal with all this tobacco in Europe and Africa. Wow, interesting. I, yeah, so the... Uh, the uh, the company headquarters in the United States, and uh, I, I've had the opportunity to go to Africa a number of times, mm -hmm. and uh, it's a it's a wonderful wonderful place, and and the job opportunity came up to kind of take care of Africa, and I jumped on it. And that's wow. how I'm here. Wow. Well, one of the reasons I've got you on Moving On TV, because everyone who comes on to Moving On TV is positive, is unique, is doing something to make the world a better place. Now, I know Pete from Unity, from Unity UK Made in Edge, where we spread positive messages and sing and do all sorts of great stuff together. So, um, tell me a little bit more about what you're doing with Africa, because that is a very um, inspiring thing. Well... <coughs> Uh, first time I was in Africa was with the Army, all right? and I, uh, I was in Special Forces, I was a medic, and uh, during the first Gulf War, the Americans pretty much trashed out the air base in Mombasa in Kenya, and then they just left, all right? So <clears throat> the Kenyans were not very happy with the Americans, and the Americans wanted to make nice, so they said, look, we'll, we'll rebuild your runway. We will send over a set of trainers, which was a special forces unit that was attached to, to go ahead and train a special forces unit for you, and uh, which is parachuting. And then we'll also send over a, 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 a medical team to go out to the desert and take care of people who haven't seen a doctor in a long time. Right. So, that so, was, that's, so, sorry, so that's how you're basically contributing. That's by right. making sure that they get a medical team. Well, and, 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 and actually, you know, here's the thing about it: we had one medic, uh, we had we had two doctors, a vet, and a dentist. All right. Okay. And of all those, I would say the dentist and the vet were the most valuable. Okay. All right, because you know you've been to the doctor. You know, the, you go and you know they write down what's wrong with you, and they say, all right, come back in three weeks, and then we'll look at it again. Well, in this situation, these, these people are never going to be seen by that doctor again, all right? Uh, what they can do is pretty limited. Mm -hmm. Whereas the dentist, if somebody has, usually what we ended up doing is pulling teeth, all right? Somebody's got a tooth that hurts and you pull it out, you have done some, them some good, right. all right? Okay. Uh, and then with the animals, what we would do is we would inoculate them and deworm them. And that sounds kind of gross, I guess. Yeah. But uh, <clears throat> uh, what happened was all of the nutrition that was going to the worm was now being produced into meat and to milk that the families of the local villagers could, uh, mm. could consume. And yeah. uh, when they heard that the Americans were coming and they were bringing you know, medicine for the animals, I mean, we'd come to a village and there'd be thousands of people there. Right. Okay. So that's a bit of background news. Now, you're also very involved in Unity. Unity, as I say, is a very positive group um, that meets to, uh, to promote um, abundance and healing and health and everything. 
But um, is it okay if I ask you a little bit about your story? Because I know you've been through a lot. Yes. You've been through a lot in life. I, I don't know enough about it, but I know you've That's been okay. through a lot in life. And yet you're a very positive, very bubbly, very loving, very giving human being. So do you mind telling us just a little bit about your, your personal history? Well, um, I grew up a white kid in a Puerto Rican black neighborhood. Oh, wow. I grew up in the hood. <laughs> All right. We got someone from the hood on Moving On TV and that's I That's right, that's right, that's uh, right. A matter of fact, um, uh, what's the name of that rap group? You know, there's a, there's a, a, there's a Christmas rap song about, you know, Christmas in House Queens. Oh, don't ask me. All right, well, about rap. all right. So anyways, uh, but but be as it may, be, be, be more, as a house is where I live. And um, uh, I, I didn't enjoy that very much, you know. Most people tend to like wherever it was that they grew up is, you know, this is home. I never felt that way about New York. Okay, so you And left. so I left there and I went to school in Kentucky, and I at the University of Kentucky. And there, there isn't anything analogous to the feeling between the North and the South in the United States, in England. Closest thing might be Scotland and England, all okay. right? In terms of, you know, we had, you know, they've had civil wars here, and we had a civil war in the United States, <clears throat> and the South lost, and they're still pretty angry about it 150 okay. years later. You know, okay. it's, it's a, and so I was from the North, right. and they reminded me every day that oh, I was from the saying. North, right. and, and, and that I really didn't belong there. So, but, you know, made it through, and, and I, when I was a little kid, I decided I wanted to be a Green Beret. And then when the time came to graduate uh, university, I said, I went to a recruiter and said, yeah, can you make a Green Beret? And he said, yes, I can. And uh, <laughs> sign right here. And um, as it turned out, normally you have to be on your second enlistment, you have to have done all these things, but they were hard up for people. So they would take anybody, you know, that maxed out the uh, entrance exams for the Army and, and was okay. in good health, which fortunately I managed to do. So, <clears throat> after college, I went into Special Forces, and then after that, you know, became a computer guy, all right? And, uh, you know, I've taught at all different levels, you know, okay. uh, sixth grade, what would they call sixth grade? I'm not exactly sure what it would be called here in Britain. So sorry to stop you there, Pete. Yeah. So you, you came to the UK. Yes. And but you went through some stuff in the UK, didn't you, with your children? Is that right? Uh oh well I've uh the only thing I I, I had I, I had two daughters. One passed on before I came to the UK. Alright. Uh she got to a uh a, as was what they call them in the U.S., a one-car wreck, which means you did something stupid and you wrecked your own car and uh, it killed her instantly. And then my younger daughter, you know, when she when she graduated from university, you know, I promised her a trip wherever she wanted to go. She said, "I want to go to England." So okay. when I, I and as I was here, you know, you know, uh, we spent two weeks cruising around. Uh, saw Shakespeare, Shakespeare lived, and uh, the ocean, and, and Wales. We went all over the place. So you came so. to England with your daughter, and came with my wife. With your wife. Yes, yes, yes. I don't, I don't mean to sound like I've got an overly complex story, but no, but uh, we uh, want uh, to uh, hear this because uh, you're, uh, so, you're uh, such uh, a positive. I came, I, I came over with my wife, yeah. and, and then life was pretty good. You know, we had our little place, and we had our way of life, and then. My wife is Lebanese, and okay. it is the it is it is the duty of a Lebanese senior daughter to take care of her mother in her old age when she gets ill. So her mom got real sick one time, and uh, uh, my wife Nasia felt very very guilty about it, and, but she didn't say anything to me. Uh, but she felt very very guilty. So finally, I said to her, "said Girl, go back to the states. Okay. All right, you know I." I can live here by myself for the rest of my contract, which was at that point was two and a half years. Mm -hmm. Now it's eleven months. 
uh, uh, I can I can take care of myself. All right, go take care of your mom. All right, so she did. So I I've, I've been here for the most part by myself, you know, uh, and and uh, the people at Unity have been as close as I get to family and friends. That's fantastic. So, you see, this is what I want to put across and moving on TV is, it's awful. I can't even imagine how I must feel to lose your child. But from the time I've known you, Pete, you are one of the most positive, enlightened, uh, um, giving human beings that I know. So, people are going through a lot these days. And one of the reasons that that's why I wanted to bring you on to Moving On TV because I want you to be able to say to people, how do you do it? How do you manage to rise above grief and the stuff that you've gone through, the pain, and carry on being such a lovely human being and a giving human being as well? Well, because uh, 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 it's the best option. Right. All right. Uh, you know, people... Anyone could find a good reason to be upset about the way life has treated them. All right, very very few people, you know, have had perfect lives. All right, so I, I'm certainly not one. So I made a, a very very painful thing happen, and we don't need to go into details of it right now. And. One of the places that I use as inspiration is the movie Gandhi. If you've never seen it, yes. I strongly recommend it. And in the early bits of the movie, when he was still in South Africa, you know, a, a white punk knocks him into the street. All right? And so his minions brush him off, and they're outraged at this. And, and, and they ask Gandhi, well, what are we going to do? He says, I'm going to forgive him. What? Forgive him after he's done this outrage to you. And he said, look, all right, I'm not forgiving him for him. I am forgiving him for me so that I don't think about it, I don't worry about it, and I can move on to bigger and better things. And at that point in time, that really helped me in a very, very difficult situation, and, and it is kind of one of the foundations of that I go through life of you know what's the point of being angry and upset and hurtful how can I take this and make something positive out of it and so when my daughter passed you know I I committed my life to trying to make the world a better place all right uh, so inspiring and and so and inspiring. and, and and the, the cool thing I've discovered, and I'll share with your, with your folks, is that making the world a better place doesn't have to be a big thing. All right. So, in other words, smiling at somebody the day that they are having a horrible day and considering suicide. And you happen to smile at them that day and say, well, you know, if that person smiled at me, maybe I'm not that terrible. Maybe I can go on another day. And that's all it took. All right. Now, quite frankly, I imagine that that could have happened. Uh, I'll never know. Um, but you're trying. Uh, but I'm trying. Something. I'm trying. You know, every, 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 you know, every person I meet, automatically, how can I put a smile on this person's face? That's amazing. So... We're going to take a break there, Pete, because sure. we do need to have some adverts. Okay. But when we come back, we're going to talk to Pete more about this positivity and how it's you can do like small things a day to help yourself and to help others. How would you get someone that's actually in intense pain? that it's hard for them to even sit and think that they could ask their pain in. How are you going to do it? Would you do that um, by steps, like slowly, slowly, gently, gently? Cause... The first thing that you want to do is imagine that you're holding a sword and shield while setting the sword and shield down and then walking up to an imagined sacred space.
the door opening and then your issue, say neck pain, walking through the door and you welcome it. You say, well, No, rien, de rien. Oh, I love you too, Marcel. Mm, mm. Oh, bonjour, bonjour. <laughs> I want to wear my face to the audience as I would a laver. And that is why I refuse to wear the makeup and the products, not unless they are organic. Because they make me feel nude. <laughs> so, come on board, organic makeup companies, moving on TV.uk. Bonjour. No, no, no. We're back. And on the community show today, I am talking to Pete Lang, who has come all the way <laughs> to High Wycombe, not from New York, but actually from where you are? I, I, I live in Wokingham. In Wokingham. Now, um, before the break, we were talking to Pete about positivity and how to make the world a better place just by doing little things, kind things, in spite of the fact that we're going through a lot. You know, people are going through grief and all sorts of stuff. And so I've got Pete here today who wants to say a little bit about that. So what can people do on a daily basis? that not only makes other people feel good, but obviously if they do something nice for someone else, they're going to feel good inside. So, how did you learn all of this? Um, were you brought up that way? Actually, no. Uh, okay. uh, the, uh, uh, my parents grew up in wartime Europe, so you know, there wasn't all this, a lot of positivity going on there. <laughs> And growing up in, in Queens, New York, there wasn't a lot of positivity. And, you know, how in most classes there's always one kid or two that everybody picks on? That was you. That was me. Okay. All right. And so I said, well, you know, when I get the chance, I'm going to make sure that I do what I can to make sure that doesn't happen to other people. Okay, yeah. so where did this come from? Because a lot of people that grow up with so much negativity and pain, they don't know how to be positive. They don't know how to be grateful. I never learned any of that. It took me a whole life transformation to be able to do this. So where, do you, where did this come to? Did you have an awakening of some kind? Did you read a book? Well, I mean, I, I'm going to have to say I was born with some of it. All right, because uh, neither of my parents were terribly religious, and even though I went to a a Lutheran uh, uh, primary school, all right, uh, I, I I I I inquired those kinds of questions. I just couldn't believe that life was meant to be miserable. All right, I wasn't prepared to accept that. Mm -hmm. All right, and I started exploring how to not be miserable. All right, and probably the first big thing that I discovered was uh, there was a, a little notice behind the library that said, "Come to a class on on uh, transcendental meditation." Okay. All right, for so free. That, so that's basically the first thing. That, you that was the first thing. A lot of us go into that, positivity that, that way. Didn't that, we? yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> you know, yeah. and, and you know, I mean, trans transcendental meditation is, uh, I think, kind of more of a business and a and a scam than it is, you know, a true, you know, let's make the world a better place kind of an organization. But nonetheless, you know, in today's world, you you can just go, you know, type in the Google. How can I meditate? Or how do I learn to meditate? Or go to YouTube, and there'll be hundreds of yeah. videos that will show you how to do it. All right. They all lead to the same thing. We all want to find that positivity. And here's, 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 okay. here's. There are thousands of different meditation techniques. Mm -hmm. All right, uh, and they're not necessarily all uh, for the same goal. All right. 
Uh, now, transcendental, basic transcendental meditation and many meditations, the objective is to bring you, a human being, in contact with the totality of humanity and uh, with the universe. Mm -hmm. All right, so there's a lot of meditation that's associated with that. Uh -huh. All right, uh, but you know, there's meditation on any topic. You know, I've got on my computer, I've got probably 10 or 15 different meditations to help you lose weight. Okay, uh, so, <laughs> but what, coming back to the positive thing, right. what do, did you start using to help you to get through on a daily basis that people can do on a daily basis, would you say? Well, for me, it was transcendental meditation, all right? And I'm not suggesting that that is... I, I, I'll give you I, I'll give you the meditation technique in the time we have left. Very simple, okay? All right, sit in a comfortable chair. Sit up as straight as you can, but don't freak out about, you know, being rigid. And breathe in, say one. Breathe out, say one. That's it. Keep And repeat. And then do that for as long as you want to do that for. You know, start off with 10 minutes, and then if you do that 20 minutes twice a day, in a month or two you will notice something is different. Okay, and um, thank you Pete, that's amazing, because what you're doing is you're focusing your mind. It's a bit like you could be sitting there looking at a candle, and you're looking at the flicker of the, can of the, right. the candle, right. and that keeps brings your mind into focus, right. doesn't it? It brings you into the moment. That's right. That, that's that, what that, it does. But that, that's <laughs> it, that, 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 is, that, that is that's what that, that is the objective of many, many forms of meditation. Mm -hmm. And I think, uh, personally, that even people who do not believe in spiritual things are still trying to find a way to stay in the moment because I think that's just something that human beings naturally do. That's yeah. one of the that's one of the things that we have come to this world to figure out. To stay in the moment. That, how to stay in the moment. And and if you can do that, you are staying closer to your higher power. That's fantastic. So this helps you. Mm. And um, and you've also got into unity. When did you get involved in unity, would you say? I got involved in unity in the nineties. And <laughs> What happened was I I had gone to a, a, universe, a Unita Unitarian Universalist church and decided I had moved and I wanted to go to another one. And I looked up an address in the phone book and I thought it was a university, a, a Unitarian Universalist church. It turned out to be a Unity church. Right. All right. And that's the first time I didn't, I'd never even heard of Unity. Okay. All right. And... Uh, uh, and they have a very, very simple uh, uh, five basic rules. That's it. There's, there's no theology. There's nothing that you have to remember. Nothing that you have to agree to. All right. Nothing that you have to believe in. Uh, there are five rules, although if you don't necessarily believe in those, I'm just going to kick you out either. Sure. Uh, and then after that, you know, it's a safe place for you to decide, you know, uh, the nature of your higher power and how you can get closer to it. Okay. Okay, so moving on from Unity, that's where I met Pete uh, over the last few years. And I, I, as I said, I have failed that you would make an incredible presenter, host for Moving On TV. I'm honored. Because the whole point of Moving On TV is positivity and... You know, teaching people how to rise above um, what's going on in our world. So, how do you feel about that? Quite excited. Yeah. I, I, I really am. Uh, uh, I, I, I'm, I, as you know, you know, I'm studying to be a minister because, yeah. you know, I, 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 matter of fact, I finished all my classes. All right. I, I've got a bunch of practical things before I get. Did you, you know, get a title that we have to call you by? Pete. <laughs> Just Pete. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you become a certified teacher. 
All right. right. And then you become a minister. Okay. All right. Uh, so I'm, I'm working on my certified teacher bit. All right. But that gives you enough juice to be able to, to conduct the day-to-day -day affairs of a church. Mm -hmm. All right. Either here in Britain or in the United States. So, uh, you know, because there are just so many people uh, that are so sad. And uh, I saw a BBC show about some outrageous number, like five million people in Britain will go an entire month without speaking to somebody on any kind of more than one sentence. Oh, and, and, and so the number of people, and, and, and it seems it's worse here than it is in the United States when we it comes to, get to that. moving on TV. Get them talking, get That's them true. interacting. That's, That's true. That, uh, I, I, mm. And, and, and I, I really think that uh, while the internet and uh, TV is a wonderful thing, all right, uh, one bad thing about it is that it makes it a lot easier to sit in your house by yourself. Exactly. All right, That's and uh, and, and so mm -hmm. uh, before then, you know, people would form groups. Mm -hmm. All right, and I can tell you, all right, as somebody who in you know their later years, obviously I didn't go to school here. All right, it is very very hard, to, you know, to meet people and to develop a social life if you didn't have one before you got here. Mm. You know, so... Uh, uh, and, 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 you know, I'm, I'm, when I'm thinking about when I go back to the United States, you know, helping organize groups to get together, because people are like cattle and dogs, all right? They are herd animals. Their followers. Well, no, no. In other words, they are herd animals. They, they, they don't, they don't live by themselves. That's why they like that, to be with people. They, they like to be with other people. Social. That's right. And loneliness is not. A that's right. That's thing. right. Which is exactly. why, which is why solitary confinement is considered such an onerous punishment. Mm. All right. Because, I mean, are, are you doing anything particularly terrible to them? No. Mm. All right. You know, you're feeding them. You know, you give them a place to sleep. All right. Uh, it is you are depriving them from interacting with other human beings. Exactly. And, and that, that's one of the problems, sorry Pete, yeah. this is one of the problems that loneliness causes depression and causes mental illness. You know, as you know from my story, when I was in the wheelchair, um, the depressions were getting very serious. So what we're trying to do here is we want to bring people on and, you know, as a host or a presenter or someone who's involved in this, in moving on TV, we want to bring people on to get them out of the house, to find their uniqueness, to find their talents, to find anything that makes them feel that they're connected in some way to the human race. So, um, but I'm going to have to end the interview there. It's wonderful having you here and I'm really looking forward to you doing some interviews and possibly to interviewing me. <laughs> so um, that's it today for the community show. Um, if you have a dream or a story, you're writing a book, uh, you want to talk about anything that makes you feel good inside, or if there's any way that we can help you combat loneliness, combat unhappiness, and stop you from watching all the negative stuff out there, then please contact me. It's Lauren, L-A-U-R-E-N-E, -E, at movingontv.uk. Come on board, and you know we'll work together. And it was lovely speaking to you today, Pete. Thank you so much. Uh, God bless. <laughs> Take care. All right, cheers. Namaste, everyone.